right? Shalom, shalom, rastasari, uh, send it salam, Shabbat shalom, and this is the 44th um, Shabbat or Senbet, sabbatical um, Sabbath reading and teaching and feeding that is called Devarim, Devarim. Um, Bamarinya in the Amharic in the Metzach produce of Negus and Neges, if you go to 44, it's called Yenegaracho Kal Yehino. Yenegaracho Kal Yehino. Now, if we turn our Bibles, we begin at the book of Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy means repetition of the law. So there was a law, right? The law that was given to them, and now the law will be repeated to them because now they're on the verge of entering into the promised land. You know what I'm saying? Now, this has a special significance, or it should have a special significance to I and I as Rastafari, you understand, when we know who we are, especially the ethnic people in particular, the ethnic Rastafari. And this does not exclude the righteous among the Gentiles, in other words, those who may not be, quote, Ethiopian, Hebrew, and part of the diaspora or descendant of the diaspora that was brought to this shores of American fulfillment of the prophecy in the scripture, the prophecy concerning the curses for disobedience. But all thanks and praise to Kedamawi Haile Shalase, to Haile Shalase the first, in the name of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for the redemption, Yehovah's and for the black redemption, Yehovah's and I and I, the once lost but now found the Beit Israel redemption. But now there's a special meaning in the redemption, not only to I and I as the ethnic um, seed, as that particular seed, but also to the righteous amongst even the Gentiles, you understand, or the European or Asian or the non-Afro-American, um, Afro-West Indian, Afro-Hispanic Rastafari, you understand, beyond those people. So we have to get these things correct because there's a lot of, there's a lot of other mixed up moods and attitudes, you understand, amongst I and I, and this is causing disharmony. We had left off actually speaking about um, Rastafari, the brotherhood unity and the crimes against humanity and the whole idea of the false reports and the, the slanders and the tail bearing, so forth and so on. Now, this is still building up on that. You understand, building up on the fact that we're in a state of disorder. And you hear a lot of ones and ones say that um, I and I not deal, you know, or one's not dealing with. Um, organization. And then they say, well, I and I is Rasta and overstand word, sound, and power. Well, if you overstand word, sound, and power, and you're saying you're not dealing with organization, then what are you saying that you're dealing with? It should be evident if you overstand that you must be dealing with disorganization. But see, it's not really your fault. Overstand. It's not really I and I fault when we are still in that state of ignorance and we still have not studied and show our ourselves approved. Now, if the opportunity to study and to show yourself approved, you understand, to God as workmen, workwoman as well, that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word um, of God, the word of truth. Uh, if you don't do that, then, then you're, you know, you're accountable. This is why the, the message is to, to preach, to proclaim. You understand, proclaim this. Those who, who know, you understand, have a responsibility to teach. Those who are able to have also a responsibility to do. But the first thing we have to do is build our and our house on the foundation. No other foundation can be laid other than our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, of Yeshua Ha Moshiach. Now, there's a couple of subject matters, all right? There's a couple of subject matters that we wanted to touch on and we wanted to deal with. Um, in this Torah portion, you understand, or in this reasoning, this reading and feeding, because we understand how a lot of these, um, this, this present Torah portion, really, if we would understand, right, if we would understand it, who we are, where we're at, and what um, significant prophetic time and space dispensation that we're living in, we can really um, uh, carpe diem. We can really seize the day. 
You know what I'm saying? We're letting the day, in a sense, get past us because we've been in that 40 or so year um, inertia, just like the Beit Israel of these Torah portions that we have been studying on, just like I and I ancestors. And so when we start to put it together, we can actually see what the true vision is. You know what I'm saying? We can recognize the reality of who we are, where we're at. You know what I'm saying? Now that we know what we know, what are we going to do about it? And this is the point that the beginning of Orit Zedagim, when the Gutters and, and the Royal Amharic of the Metzhaf Kedus is called Orit Zedagim, or the Torah of the repetition. Now, there's a couple of points that we want to um, reason on, and perhaps we should reason on this actually before we get into this Torah portion in more detail. But I think it's, it will be good for I and I, grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture, you know, and make sure that when ones are, are listening to this or are sitting down and studying this and hopefully are able to, to keep the Sabbath set aside, can have the opportunity to also have pen and paper and all the, you know, the, 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 the tools that one needs, you know, since so one doesn't come to Jah's work, in other words, unprepared, unprepared. So we're, we're going to call this right here, this part right here will be the beginning of the 44th Torah portion, the beginning of the 44th Torah portion. So let's um, put this up on the board, all right? This will be I and I. RSS or Rastafari Sabbatical Study, RSS, RSS number 4-4, right? Number 4-4, that's called in the Hebrew Devarim, Devarim, right? Devarim. Now, Bamarinya in the Amharic is known as the Orit, right? Orit Ze, which means of Da. Gim, right? The Orit Zedagim. And Dagim from Degame means to repeat. You know what I'm Means to repeat. So, in a sense, we can see that I and I, as the once laws but now found Beta Israel, are going through a repeat of prophecy. We're going through a repeat. And in the prophets, in the Biyat, Yah, Jah, if you please, does say that this would happen. And that in the latter days, you know what I'm saying? In the latter days of this time, space, this dispensation, we call it either the Gentile world domination from a biblical perspective. Others might call it um, white supremacy or the European nations, you know. We study the history and the prophetic time and space of that. So now that we're coming to this so-called new age or this new dispensation that the, all the 2012, you know, all the speculations concerning 2012. Some of them are actually correct, but all we can know, really, the truth is to refer to source. And the source for I and I is the B-I-B-L-E, being guided by the Spirit of God in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach, in and through our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the basic foundation right there. So even before we could move forward, we had to go over that again, you understand, because many ones and ones in Rastafari had either not known this, or were not told this, or had become forgetful of that which they should have known. And, and it's very clear, if we would go to His Imperial Majesty's autobiography, just for a moment, just to reinforce this particular principle, this particular foundation. If you study the scriptures, that no other foundation can be laid other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the devil, Satan, has deceived humanity. In the ancient times, Satan, Diablos, the evil, the evil force, or the rebellious force, spiritual force in the universe, deceived I and I people, black people. You know what I'm saying? We were deceived first. I know the Afrocentrics probably won't say that, won't go there. So, and that's, that's why the, that movement is in the state of inertia that's in as well. And we as Rastafari have to recognize that we have a relationship to that movement, but we cannot put the cart in front of the horse. You understand? The cart in front of the horse. Many of the Afrocentrics are ignorant, willingly or just ignorant, of the fact that the whole Pan-African movement owes much, if not all, of its overcoming influence 
in the times when it really showed such to the King of Kings, to Christ in his kingly character, to Kedamawi Haile Selassie. And I and I say that without any sort of apology, you understand? And we should say that without any sort of apology because many of our fellow black brothers and sisters and, and even others are kind of caught up in a frozen psychological state. They know what they know, but then how come we're not able to make those forward changes with all of the knowledge? Because we have to put first things first or first principles first. All right? So in the preface of his Imperial Majesty's autobiography, which we read a portion of it to you previously, we'll just read the fourth part of this prayer or petition of the Son of Man, of Rastafari, known to the world at that time as Kedamawi Haile Shalase, to the Son, to His Son, to our Son, to Getachin Jesus Christos, to our Savior, to our great High Priest of the Order and after the Order of Melchizedek, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach, is that High Priest. Right? Let's, let's recognize these principles here. Now, fourth, it says, although there is nothing that is not written in the Holy Scriptures, if you will enable me to write as I have planned, his imperial majesty states, may our kin and our brothers who will rise up in future take note of the word you have spoken. Quote, without me, you can do nothing. End quote. And may their hearts be convinced that with your help, with the help of our black Lord and Savior, Getachinam and Halitachin Jesus Christos, with your help, His Imperial Majesty says, alone will they be able to do anything. So if we look at the stagnation amongst Ionized Rastafari, the inertia, you know, saying we've gone away from that divine heritage, that, that groundation foundation. This goes beyond just being baptized in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. That is a good step for those who are, who are so guided to do so, but you still have to build up. You have to learn the language. You, know, and you have to study the scriptures. And you, most of all, you have to know the teaching of His Majesty. Because Majesty is that I and I, I and I, Christian, I and I anointing is not limited to a particular church. But why the Ethiopic Church? Why is the Ethiopic Church so significant? Because it's there that that particular treasure, you understand, in the literature, you understand, in the writing, in the books. This is why all enemies of holy Ethiopia sought to destroy or to steal the manuscripts and the documentation. I mean, let's, let's, let's recognize it. We see it happen in ancient Egypt and other places, so forth and so on. But not to go off of the point, His Majesty states right here that and he's praying to, it. Here, here we see the, the, the Father, you know, and the fatherhood of God made manifest, you understand, know, among men and people in the person of Kedamawi Haile Shalazi, speaking to the Son, you know, and speaking to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, some will say, well, how does that happen? Some will say, well, 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 well how does that happen? You understand, know, well, well, let's look at Revelation for, for a brief moment right here. So you can understand. And remember, there's a mystery of God. And just to heal up one of I and I, brethren, heal up um, 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 uh, humble, humble Tafari, I Gong, you understand, heal up to the reason that we were on on the, the, the Facebook. And right here is, is a part of that mystery that we, that we spoke about. You understand, it's part of that mystery. And now you see where, where Christ says something very, very interesting, right, when he's speaking to the, the, the seven churches, right, and he's speaking about overcoming, and he's speaking about the position because of such overcoming that he was able, you understand, to, to reach such that it says that he sat down in the throne. Remember, when Christ resurrected, it said that he was what? He was, he was at the right hand of God. Right? At the right hand, at the right hand of God. And then when he's speaking to the seven churches, he says to one of the churches, let's just get this right here, he says to one of the churches that he has overcome and he is what? He is seated, 
Yosin in the throne with the Father, and he says that those of us who are overcomers have that same right. Now, what is interesting is that the position of Christ changes from, from the, the, the right hand of the Father to sitting in the throne, right, to sitting in the throne with the Father, you know what we're saying, or sitting in the Father's in the Father's throne. And it's right here in the final message to the final church and, and the final church age. You know what I'm saying? And, and now, symbolic, this is that final church age, the church of the Laodiceans or Ladokia, the final state of apostasy. And here's the place and attitude of Christ at the end of the church age. So the, the message in the word of Kedamawi, Haile Shalasi, of Haile Shalasi the first in the Lutheran interview, where he says that, well, um, our Christianity and, and the truth of Christ, you know, is not just limited to one particular church, you know, saying, to one particular church, and how we see this, the, the universal um, messianic message going forward from Christ and his kingly character. And this is what now has reverberated and the ripples of the Rastafari out of every tribe and out of every nation and out of every tongue and so forth and so on comes from. But now we as ethnic Israel, the, 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 the natural branches, the descendants of those natural branches that were broken off, who are now being regrafted in, we have to recognize this place and attitude of the black Messiah, of the black Christ at the end of the church age. Verse 20 it says, Behold, look and see. Look and see, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Verse 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. It doesn't say I'm sat down at the right hand as, as the first martyr, Estefanos, Caduce Estefanos, or Stephen, Stephen saw. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not at that position in the prophetic psalm of 110. You know what I'm saying? I think it's 110, the psalm where it says, sit at my right hand, or Yahweh has said to Adoni. You know what I'm saying? Yahweh said to Adoni, sit at my right hand until your what? Your enemies become your footstool. We're living in this age in which the enemies of God and Christ, the enemies of the Father and the Son, the enemies of His Imperial Majesty and Gitachin, Namit, Hanatachin, Jesus Christos, are becoming that very footstool. You know what I'm saying? Verse 22, it says, He that hath an ear, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So this means that this is a message that from a carnal ear, if you have a carnal ear, a worldly ear, you're not going to really hear this. You understand? It's like the seed, the sower. It's sowed, but when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not comprehend or understand what that word is, it says that it's snatched. Then cometh the what? The evil one. Then cometh the cares and the desires of the world and takes that one off of that spiritual path. Because your enemy, our enemy, does not want I and I to be on the spiritual path or to recognize and be able to operate, you know what I'm saying, in the spiritual and in the temporal, you know what I'm saying, simultaneously. And we can only do that in and through Christ. This is why His Majesty's message um, um, and His prayer that for the kin and, and, the, and the brothers who would rise up in the future, did it not His Majesty's state when they asked Him, about being Christ and being God, he said that um, I will be what re, uh, I will be um, replaced. In other words, I think he used the, the translator used that word by the oncoming generation. Now, many think that that oncoming generation is the careless Ethiopian generation that that was witness um, circa 1975, uh, roughly up until. Um, the hundredth, the centenary of his imperial majesty. It is not that generation. There's still a remnant of that generation, like there's still a remnant of the 
of that, that wandering generation here in the Americas and the Caribbean. Many of them are our parents, you understand, and maybe our grandparents, you understand, who, like the Israelites, and this is where the, this is where the message is very interesting, like the Israelites had, 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 had um, turned away from, instead of coming out of Babylon, they went down to Egypt, the march on Washington. They, they, they went backward instead of forward. Now, I know this is a message that we continue to, to preach and teach because it's very important for you to understand the significance of it. Otherwise, the instructions that we have, even in this particular Torah portion, Devarim, which means these are the words. Now, we can go into the word of this when we study the Hebrew because we have Devorah or Deborah, like Deborah. Deborah comes from that. And we know that at the root of that is the word of bee. You understand the word, the, 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 the creature known as the bee. And we know the bee makes honey. Now, he brings us into a land that flows with what? With what? Milk and honey. Now, this is both manifested in a literal way, but there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a spiritual, there's a metaphysical, there's an overstanding to it. And in order for the temporal to manifest, we need to understand what the spiritual is behind. In other words, in order to make that thing appear or that thing happen, you understand, or that blessing true, one has to understand the spiritual, you understand, to what to focus on in prayer, what to focus on in faith, you understand, because that's the real work right there. The real work for I and I is the work of faith. You know, like I often say, we can believe the weatherman, we can believe the newscaster, we hear something and we believe it, we don't study it and search it out. But yet when we're talking about these truths, in spite of all the evidence, many still have some trouble, you understand, know, some trouble um, accepting it as true, trusting in it. And that's what slows us down. This is what really creates the disorganization. You know, and this, this thing called disorganization. So it's understandable that some would say, well, I and I is not about organization on a level of emotion. You know, you, you had expectation, like some of us have had expectations in the Federation throughout the years, and we still have those expectations. Yet we're recognizing more and more that we have to build our house on that rock. You know, and so we can resist all the slings and the arrows of so-called outrageous fortune, you'll see all the slander, you'll see that the ministers of Jah, the ministers of God and Christ have to endure. Like, you know, like, like I've said before, you'll see it's not a matter of, you'll see if someone has done something wrong, you'll see, but it's having that evidence and then to approach them, especially in the brotherhood of His Majesty and His Christ, there's a way to go about that. You understand? And instead of submitting ourselves to his will, we've been doing our own thing and wondering, well, how come Jah ain't blessing our own thing? He's not obligated to. You understand? So now the Israelites, at this particular point of um, the word, and let's go to Devarim. This is the book right here. You understand? For, for this um, Torah portion study right here, Devarim, or the Hebrew book of Deuteronomy. Right, the Hebrew book of um, the Hebrew book of Deuteronomy. So let's go to the first part of this and, and begin and begin off this study. Bessema Av Wasman Fis Kadus Ahadu Amlak Devarim, and um, it means in Hebrew the words, and it's the second word, the first distinctive word in the parasha, and it's the forty-fourth weekly Torah portion in the annual, uh, we say Judaic, they say Jewish, we say Judaic as the line of the tribe of Judah, cycle in the Beta Israel, cycle of Torah reading, and it's the first in the book of Deuteronomy. It constitutes Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1, to Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 22. So we as uh, black Judah, or black Judahites, or one might say Jews, when speaking to um, ones with a Gentile mentality. In the diaspora, we generally read it in July or August. Now, here's a note right here that we got from the compiled um, wiki notes, and we publish it here. It is always read, it says, on Shabbat um, Chazon. And Shabbat Chazon is the, the Sabbath that it, the, the Sabbath immediately, it says, before Tisha B'Av. 
Because remember, we said Tisha B'Av from the other day, but it's a three weeks. So if you want to learn more about that particular tradition, you know, that, that we see a significance for us as black Jews in Beit Israel and an and elect Rastafari, a significance to the Tisha B'Av and the destruction of the temple. Because in a sense, when we look at the EWF, the Ethiopian World Federation, and that particular structure or organization, almost intended to be as a main wheel or hub, you understand, of, of, of a government. Yes, it is a, it does have that potentiality, but not apart from our divine heritage, you understand. And just because one is baptized, for example, into um, the Orthodox Church, this does not mean that one is going to learn something by osmosis, you understand. You remember what Christ says, the work is, to have faith, you know, sent on the one whom is sent. And unfortunately, many have not had that faith on the one who was sent. And we're speaking not of Marcus Messiah Garvey, but we're speaking of Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, right, Dr. Dr. Bayan. And so we published this book right here because it is true that no one remembers Dr. Malaku. You understand? Know, Nobody remembers Dr. Malaku. I, I challenge some of you sound system men and, and artists and singers to study up the history and, and you know, create some worthy songs because it's a shame there's no song celebrating this particular great man. And just moreover, one who was sent to us, you understand, know one who was sent to us for the specific purpose that we still um, are praying for and hoping for and working towards of coming out of Babylon, of, it, of it establishing um, um, righteousness in the earth. But first we must establish that righteousness, in order, not we establish, but first that righteousness must be established in our hearts and in our minds. And that connects with our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, or Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, it's important for us to, you know, use this. This is another lecture that we wanted to touch on right now. And, 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 and um, we're just pointing to this right here. This is the counterfeit and false image, as you probably already well know. You see 1492. Um, Genesis chapter 15 says 400 years. Go do the math. 1492, 400 years, what do we have? We have the birth of Lij Tafari, the son of man. You understand? In that particular country with that unique biblical and prophetic connection. And we're speaking about holy Ethiopia. You understand? We're speaking about um, the land of Kush. We're speaking about the Queen of Sheba. We're speaking about the Queen of the South. A lot of people are still speculating was she really Ethiopian? Was she this or that? Come on. Those of us who, who have studied the documents and have faith, you understand, in the truth must declare the truth and now move forward, not continually to bicker that and question. It's only those who, who, whose false an inheritance, you understand, in other words, their false claims on this inheritance are really reproved by that truth, the same way with our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because the white man, the European, he's been deceived too by Satan. You understand? And this is what many of our, our Gentile brothers and sisters also have to recognize in ministering. You understand? And then seeking to minister the truth of this matter, to learn the truth of this matter. So we get off of some of that, you know, racial kind of stuff, like, you know, that, that, that hate that hate produced, in a sense. Because that's not of the King of Kings, and that is definitely not of his Christ, our black Lord and Savior. So we see Tisha B'Av, we see the destruction of Jerusalem. In a sense, with the events that would um, follow you know, the establishment of the Ethiopian World Federation, you know, and, and that focus on Ethiopia in addition to the events that occurred in Ethiopia, the creeping coup, we can see that same for us as Rastafari, as that new imperial Ethiopian aristocracy. You know, and we can see the destruction you know, and of the monarchy and destruction you know, and of that temple. You understand? Of that particular temple. Now, there's more I'll go into on that, you yeah, are willing, but I wanted just to put that forward. Some might overstand, and those who do overstand, please share it with those who might be willing to 
hear and willing to receive. Um, so it's a, it's a Sabbath, they say, immediately before the Tisha B'Av, right? So one could say, you know, we're either a week ahead or a week behind, depends on other communities, because different Hebrew community and Jewish communities, they have their own order, and this is the order that we, together, being guided by the Holy Spirit, are following, and may, may, and may John bless us in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus Christos. Now, here's a summary. I want you to get this summary and see how well this summary connects with where we're at. It says, in the 40th year after the exodus from Egypt, right, in the 40th year after the exodus from Egypt, Moses addressed the Israelites on the east side of the Jordan River. He recounted the instructions. There were specific instructions that John had given them in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Now, when the Israelites, the Beit Israel, were at Horeb, or Horeb, um, Mount Sinai, John had told them that they had stayed long enough at that mountain. It's almost like I and I, when we're dealing with some of these so-called mountains, these issues in the community. We, we stayed too long at that mountain when we already know the way to go forward. You understand? It's almost like lamenting, you understand, about something that, was done wrong, but now we see the right way to go, and instead of moving forward, one still lament. You know what I mean? You, you, you know, that kind of a psychological thing that we need to get past. But it's only Yeshua, only that faith in Yeshua, that living faith, that new and living way, really um, assist us in that overcoming. Now here, Josh says to them that they had stayed too long or long enough at that mountain, and it was time for them to make their way to the hill country of the Canaan. It was time to make their way to that highland country of the Canaan. As with I and I, we've stayed too long at this mountain of so-called white supremacy or this mountain of babbling on about Babylon. And really, the time has come after 40 years, you'll send, some say even a little more than 40 years, for us to take possession of the land that Jah had swore to assign to their fathers, to our fathers, to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov, and their ears, their ears after them, according to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. So that gives us the overview. That shows how this even connects with who we are and where we're at. I heard someone say, I think on the Facebook or one of the pages, it might have been, um, Brother Omar, something that he has said, and some have been asking us about some of the statements there. Um, but he, had meant, he said that, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for, like, Christ to come again? You know, and some really are kind of waiting for some sign of saying, I am Christ, or this is Christ, or that is Christ, to come again in order for them to move forward. I mean, there's a, there's a whole bunch of Christians who... Um, are on that philosophy, but that sort of philosophy, waiting for so-called Christ to come again, is pertaining to this one right here, not pertaining to the true one. It's pertaining to this lie right here. You understand this lie right here that is really sustained by white supremacy. You know, this this lie is sustained by white supremacy. They say it doesn't matter what color Jesus is. Yet, if you show them this picture, very, 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 very few would really say, oh, that is um, Caesar Borgia. You understand? That's the Borg right there. So you have to come out of the Borg. You have to first of all recognize the truth of Christ's humanity. This is very important. Though it's not the only aspect, I must caution many of our black brothers and sisters, you understand, who may boast, you understand, that, well, Christ is black. Ha ha, he ain't white. He is black. And all the evidence that we have, but if he is black, if he is our color, you understand, are we his kind of black people? That's the question we have to ask. And so his imperial majesty, Ketamawi Haile Selassie, he gives us a real and a living example. You understand? A real and a living example as well as his instruction, as well as his teaching. Now, if we look at this inertia, stagnation, Lack of progress, lack of development, lack of settlements. You understand? We should have, have, have many settlements all over Africa by this particular time. But 
how could we do it if we say I and I not deal with organization? And we're not pointing out any specific organization, although we've used much of this as a reference point in particular to the Ethiopian World Federation because this is what His Majesty has sent and given to us, this Afro-American or African-American Ethiopian organization. I have to state that right there because there's been a movement to try to make ones believe as though the African Americans did not play any significant role and their descendants, who many of us are, do not play a significant role even in this present time. You understand? And that's like if we are a corporate man, if all of the tribes, right, the 12 tribes, are like a corporate body, you understand? And we say, well, foot, I don't need you foot. You understand? I don't need you hand. You understand? What would happen to the body? You understand? I'm sure many of you already know that example. I just loosely paraphrase the scripture right there. You understand? So every part, every member that is truly a member is vital and is important. So as we're studying the Old Testament, let us be studying the Old Testament in the light, beholding Yeshua HaMoshia and recognizing that these are they which testify of him. So when we keep him, you understand, in his proper perspective and context with the scripture, we'll be able to see the application, you understand, the application for us in the present time. You understand, and the, the, the word of the day is order. The word of the day is order. And we're going to go into organization a little bit more because we're severely, you know, at this present time, I and I, the society is severely um, understaffed, you understand, with many of the projects that have been ongoing for several years now, you understand, benefiting many ones such as the Prisoners Outreach Project, where many of our Rastafari um, brethren get incarcerated for a variety of, uh, I call them quality of life crimes. In some cases, some more serious crimes, and in a few cases, even so-called manslaughter crimes, and a few of a few of those, like one tenth of one percent of those, even those who have admitted that it was either their bad, but other cases, of course, you know, is a bunch of framing or you know sticking the tail on the black man, so to speak. You understand? But either way, these projects need ones and ones assistance. You understand? In addition to just I and I, because there's much resource and much time that we have put in it, and we give thanks for that. And we continue to put time and resource into it. But now with many ones receiving the word and asking, well, what can I do, so forth and so on, we want to give a little more message on what ones can do, you understand, in this time of so much technology. It might not be up. The Internet might not be on later on this afternoon. It might not be on tomorrow or next week or whatever. But while it is on, and while we can, as the old phrase says, make hay while the sun shines, make I and I and make that hay while the sun shines. Because hay is for the horses, and the horses are for the movement, right? You get how that goes together right there? So let's understand that parable, but understand how it works in, 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 in reality. Mm-hmm. All right, so in speaking about the 40 years, Devarim, you understand, Deuteronomy, repetition of the law. Okay, so now it's, it's 40 years later. Let's get our Bibles, our scripture, and let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 1. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Now, um, even in last week's uh, portion, and a couple of these portions, those who've been who have taken the opportunity to to go a little deeper and study, I'm sure you've noticed there's a lot of things in there. There's probably a lot of questions that ones and ones have, and hopefully we'll have time and opportunity to either answer them or to point ones into the proper direction in order to answer them. But now let's deal with organization. Mm hmm Because it's the word that is the key. It's the Devar, the Debar, the Debar. It's called Devarim here, but it's also Debar. Mm -hmm. Now, interesting that the word Debar in Hebrew, right? Debar in Hebrew, it means word. 
Devarim or Devarim, right? Devarim means words, words, right? Now, Zedagim means of the repetition. So it's the Orit or it's the Torah of repeating, right? Now, so there's a, there's a little difference here. You're saying the title. Remember, the title here is different than here in the Hebrew. The title is based on the, you know, based on uh, the, the word, you know, the first words. The title is taken from the first words of those ancient manuscripts, all right? So let's first touch on Devar, because Devar, let me just show you this right here, because maybe it will make a little bit of sense, a little bit more sense, should we say, with this particular um, portion that we're, that we're in right now. If we take the word um, Devar, right, and we have D-E-V-A-R. Well, the V-A-R, that V right there is basically the Ashkenazi speech. Right? If we now repoint it properly, it will be Debar. Now what's interesting, we have Debre, you understand, Debre, right, Bamarinya, right, Debre, right, almost like the name, Debre or Deborah. Now Deborah, if we add Deborah, right, right here, we have Deborah. If you look up Deborah in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, it probably would say something to the effect of B. Now we know that a bee and Deborah was like the queen bee in a sense. Think about it for a moment if you know the scripture and judges. She was one of the female judges, right? One of the female judges, right? Who, who um, uh, delivered Israel from enemy occupation. You understand? And many of us are under enemy preoccupations. You understand? We're under enemy preoccupation. All the skills that we have. You understand the, the the gifts and the and and the skills, or you know um, these. You know, no, God, God gives these particular gifts to us even before we repent, even before we change our mind, even before we turn around. You understand? We're facing this way, and God is saying to turn around. You know what I'm saying? He's saying to us as the once lost but now found, Beta Israel as well, to turn around. Turn around from that straight way. Look at what I said to you. Look at the words that I said. You know, let us re-look at the words and say, well, what are the steps towards order, right? Towards order. Let's put this right here. Towards order, right? And organization. So you're going to see that this chapter right here, Devarim, is about order and organization. Basically, it's repeating the words that were said and told to a generation 40 years before. This is like I and I is going over histories, whether it's Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, you know, in the Ethiopian World Federation. You know, we're going through a history that was already 40 years old, rediscovering things that some knew 40, some may have known 80 years ago. You know, so we have this gap. Now, when we look at, well, how come that gap? You know, what's, fill in that, let's fill in that gap, right? Let's fill in that gap. Now, if we fill in that gap, we recognize that 40 years ago, there was some organization. When we go 80, 70 to 80 years ago is when we reached the Federation time. The Federation, you know what I'm saying, was based on other organization, other groups, you know what I'm saying, that were active. You know what I'm saying? There were some groups that were um, using the movement. You understand? Maybe embezzling funds and doing other things. That's written all in the history. You understand? And there was evidence to prove that was going on. Not just false reports and slanders and tail bearing, but there was actual evidence of that. But the overwhelming majority of groups, you understand, were organized towards the Ethiopian and the Ethiopia cause and the cause of Ketamawi, Haile Selassie. So they were, they were in that we can say almost like coming out of Egypt. They were seeking to come out of Egypt. And Egypt, in that sense, would be like America. But, but Egypt more, in a sense, today, and when it says spiritual Egypt, is like D.C. You really have to understand how spiritual Egypt is like D.C. And the prophets, and the prophets, they were told not to go to Egypt. And this is kind of similar you know, to what this Torah portion is reminding the Israelites about. It's reminding the Israelites about those scouts. You know, saying those scouts who were sent. And how ten of them brought back a what? A false report. You know, saying, and this false report did what? 
it discouraged over two million people. You understand? It discouraged over two million people. Can you imagine how many people were discouraged by all these false reports, even by Marcus Garvey's false reports concerning the King of Kings? Can we now see how all of this makes sense when we say that it's not to remove Marcus Garvey out of the equation. We can't even remove him out of the equation. He's in the equation. But we have to put things properly, rightly, you know what I'm saying? We have to rightly divide the word. It was him, Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan, whom Haile Selassie the first sent. And his name, as we touched on before, is very interesting. His name means, and this um, scribe that we wrote right here, we quoted this on page 2 from Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. Now, if you recall, in the vid that we put up previous to this, we touched on Rastafari, Brotherhood, Unity, Exodus, I think, chapter 23, uh, verses uh, 1 to um, 9, and was speaking on crimes against humanity. You know what I'm saying? It was speak speaking on false reports. Now, remember, this was said before the spies were sent in, or the scouts. This was said well before that. So here's the word by Marinya says, It says, Behold, I send an angel or a melach before thee, before thee, before your face. You understand as as the point man, you know, or, or, or the point person, right? The one who is on point, right? To keep thee in the way, to keep thee in the way, the truth, and the life, right? Of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, of Christ and kingly character, to keep thee in the way and to bring thee, get that, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Now, what place? has been prepared for us. Is it not the African Zion? Is it not the African Zion? Is it not holy Ethiopia? You understand? Or the biblical land of Cush, which is our metaphoric in this Torah portion. This is our meta metaphoric Kana'an. What was it? Wasn't that the purpose there? Let's turn our Bibles for a moment to chapter 23. Let's just, before we can go forward, you understand, we have to reflect on what has, what has already been, you understand, so we can learn. So here we have in chapter 23, verse 20, that we just read to you the first verse from this new publication on Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan that has been published by the Society of the Imperial Majesty, by LOJ Society. Um, you can get a copy of this. Some information some of you already know, but some things in there might be something um, new. But we just thought that, how come there's no book about Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan? I mean, what's up with that? You know, we can't talk about, well, how come the other folks don't do it? Or how come these folks don't do it? So we had to do something about it. Now, instructions and promises concerning the conquest of the land. The conquest of the land. Not just going there just, just to, to fight and to lose, you understand, but how to conquer the land, you understand? It says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and just think about it, to keep thee, to protect thee in the way, you understand, in the way, the truth, and the life. And think about the work of Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan, you understand? So in this chapter, this is similar in a sense, he's almost like Moses, you understand? He, he's, he's like he served that same purpose at that point in their wilderness experience that Moses, or Musa, the head of the fraternal order of the Levites, you understand, know served. It says, and to bring thee, bring, thee, and to do it, bring thee into the place which I have prepared. So we look at repatriation, because this message perhaps also touches on repatriation, returning to the Father. You understand? Or returning to that land that the Father has given us, of which Shashimani is like the Shashimani is like the the, the, the Jericho, so to speak. It is, it's like that first point. You understand? As I and I have said before, we say again. You understand? I and I am Joshua. I and I know the way. You understand? And this is not being arrogant. You know, ones might think, oh, blah, 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 blah. But but you know, like Christ said. 
He said, um, if you don't trust me, then trust the work for the work's sake. You understand? Here in verse 21, it says, beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name, get this, verse 21, Exodus 23, 21, for my name is in him. Did you understand that? My name is in him. It's not saying, well, my name is, he, he, he got my name on a piece of paper, or he, he, he knows my name, or, you know, um, or, no, my name is in him. Is this not the case with Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan? You understand that the name was in him? You understand the name of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, the name of Rastafari? We even say that when you look at it, Malaku Amanu Abayan was, in that sense, and therefore is and will be, but in the historical sense, was a Rastafari. You understand? Oh, he was not a locks man. He didn't have the locks on that level, yet he was a Rastafari, because that name was in him, not just that he knew a Rastafari name, not that he was a follower of a Rastafari as a Rastafari. You understand? But that that name in the same sense as Jah is speaking of this angel. It says, Beware of him, obey his voice. Provoke him not. So those three, beware of him. You understand? Be, be, be aware of him. Our people are just becoming aware of Dr. Malak or Emmanuel Bayin again, much less bewaring of him in the other sense that you can interpret that word. You understand? In other words, the awareness of Dr. Malako Emmanuel Bayan almost has been completely struck out amongst us as Rastafari, especially in connection with the Promised Land, especially in connection with Kedamawi Haile Selassie, especially in connection with repatriation. You see, Garvey, Marcus Messiah Garvey, the back to Africa. It's amazing that we still focus on that. We don't say forward to Africa. See, really the message is forward to Africa, but what is the way? You know what I'm saying? What, I'm, we're not talking about just the directions there. You could get on the plane and just go. You know what I'm saying? But will you conquer the land? Or will the land conquer you? You know what I'm saying? Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. What Marcus Messiah Garvey did was, was a high level of provocation, and much less um, slander, a defamation. You understand? And discouragement. And, and it was a great discouragement. And unless we are able to be mature and admit it, you know, I and I love Garvey, Marcus Garvey, but we don't love what he did, and we are not going to kind of suppress that, you understand, to make one believe a lie. Because he believed in that lie over the last 40 years, what good has that done uh, so we have to put into this equation this period of time. Let's just put this right here. Forty years, right? Forty years later, you understand? Are we as a people better off? Now, some of y'all might only be half that age right now. Well, it's, that's good. That is good for you. But what is good, what is even better is that you learn, you understand, from the experience of others who have gone forward. Learn from the best practices and procedures, and also learn from those other examples that one might not be so happy uh, about learning, but it's, it's not about emotions and feelings are good servants. They make poor masters. You understand? One has to know the truth and have to know how to curb, you know, the emotionalism and to curb, in a sense, their enthusiasm. Not, not to get rid of it, but to curb it. Curb it. Because if you don't curb it, it's like curbing your dog. You know, if you have a dog and you don't curb it, then other people are stepping in your shit. You know what I'm saying? And in a sense, that's where we find many of ourselves stepping in other people's shit. Because ones do not curb, perhaps, their enthusiasm or curb their emotionalism instead of getting that knowledge. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 being, and loving the truth. Because some might be after knowledge, but they don't love the truth. You see, so they're looking for knowledge, but they don't have a love of the truth. You see, the love of the truth, this comes with that new birth. This is what we have to keep um, reminding ourselves and our brothers and sisters of this new birth. You understand? Of, of this new birth in Christ. 
you understand, into the glory of our Father. Because we cannot, we cannot enter to the Father, approach the Father, unless it's through Christ. And if you just recognize just from the, from the temporal level, if you're reading Hala Selassie's speeches and his utterances and his testimony of Christ, and if you went there saying, fire button, fire button, Jesus, or yes, you know, you, you wouldn't really go too far. And this is the reason, same reason why over 40 years later, ones and ones have not gone too far. Ones and ones may not like that, but, you know, um, they don't have no reward for I and I. They, they are not 